Hey everybody, in a previous video I showed you how to provision a PGX with the pay-as-you-go model using a new provisioning wizard right from the Google Cloud Console. This new wizard behind the scenes uses a different network architecture called Private Service Connect to enable access to the APGX runtime. In this video, I want to show you how to expand this setup by provisioning a second APGX runtime instance in a different region. Then, we're going to update the global load balancer to route and distribute traffic between the two runtime instances. My name is Miguel Mendoza, and I hope you're going to learn something new today. Let's start by looking at the existing setup so we can have a good idea of the components that are already there. First, we had the actual runtime instance, which has a service attachment. Then, if we go to the Google Cloud Console, we should be able to see that there is also a load balancer that was created by the provisioning wizard, and this load balancer has a backend service that has a private service connect network endpoint group, and this network endpoint group is pointing to the service attachment for the runtime instance. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to spin up a new runtime instance in a different region. This new runtime instance is also going to have the test environment attached to it. This means that all the proxies that are currently deployed to the test environment, they are also going to be available in the new runtime instance. Once the new runtime instance is up and ready to accept traffic, we're going to go to the global load balancer, we're going to edit it, and we're going to modify the existing backend service to have a second private service connect network endpoint group that points to the new runtime instance. Great, so we have an action plan. And I'm going to try to show you how to do all of this from the Google Cloud Console and from the APG Console. However, if you need to use command line, there's a page in the APG documentation that describes this exact same setup step by step using the gcloud command line tool as well as curl to call the APG APIs. Eventually, you end up with the exact same setup that I described with two APG runtime instances in different regions and a global load balancer that uses private service connect to route traffic to these instances. All right, enough talk, let's actually do it. So let's go to the APG console and create a new instance. For the region, I'm going to pick US East 1 and I'm also going to leave the name as US East 1 and for the IP range allocation, I'm going to do custom. Now you're going to need a slash 22 for the APG runtime and a slash 28 for APG support in case that they need to do some troubleshooting. So how do you come up with these two ranges? You should ask the network administrators in your organization so that they give you ranges that are available and do not conflict with the rest of the network. You should also tell them to make these two ranges available over the existing peering connection between the APG VPC and the service networking VPC. In my case, I am the network administrator. So what I'll do is that I will show you how to allocate these two ranges from the Google Cloud Console. So let's go over there. In here, we're going to go to VPC and select the APG VPC. Then we're going to go to private service connection and you can see here, these are the two existing ranges. So we're going to allocate two new ones and they're going to be one for runtime and one for support. So let's start with the runtime range. This one is going to be US East one. And for the value, let's do this slash 22. Now let's do the range for support. And for the range, let's do a slash 28. Great. So now that the two ranges are there, we can go and update the existing peering connection between the APG VPC and the service networking VPC. So we'll edit this connection, select the two new ranges, click OK and update. Now this will take a minute or so, so we'll wait here until this is complete. Great, so the peering connection has been updated and you can see that both of the new ranges are now available over the peering connection. So I should be able to 
grab these values now and use them in the dialog for creating a new instance. So let's go over here. We have the slash 22. Now let me grab the slash 28. And we should be good to go. Next, let's choose the disk encryption key. And I do not already have one, so I'm going to create a new one. All right, that should be good. And we also have to grant the APG identity access to this, uh, to this disk encryption key. Next, I'm going to select the environments that are going to be attached to this runtime instance. I only have one, so that's what I'm going to choose. Finally, for service attachment, I am going to leave the defaults as is. This is basically an allow list that says, hey, whatever projects I put in this list, these projects are allowed to connect to the APG runtime. By default, the project that is associated with the APG organization is already allowed. So I do not have to do anything. However, if I was setting up the global load balancer in a different project, then that project would need to be listed in here. Well, I think this is all that we need to create the instance. So let's go ahead and create it. All right, so the new instance is being created and it will take around 30 minutes before provisioning is complete. So I'm just going to wait and we'll come back once it's done. Actually, while we're waiting, I want to show you something. Let's go ahead and take a look at the existing test environment. You can see that this environment has an aggregate count of two nodes. What this means is that there are two gateway nodes currently associated with the test environment. In the pay-as-you-go model, you pay for however many gateway nodes are being used per hour. So where did the two come from? This is because every time you attach an environment to a runtime instance, it needs a minimum of two gateway nodes. So this means that once the new runtime instance is up and ready, it's also going to have the test environment attached to it. So the test environment is going to have a total of four gateway nodes. So the new runtime instance has come up successfully. And you can also see that it has the test environment attached to it. And if we go to the environments, now we can see that the test environment has four gateway nodes as we expected. Next, we're going to modify the global load balancer so that it can start sending traffic to the service attachment of the new runtime instance. Let's go over to the cloud console. And since the new service attachment is in a different region, we're also going to need a new subnet in that region. So let's go ahead and add the subnet. This is going to be a private service connect subnet. And the region is going to be US East 1. So let's go ahead and create it. This will take about a minute or so, so I'll wait here and come back once it's done. So the subnet has been created. Next, I'm going to create a new network endpoint group that is going to be tied to the service attachment. So let's go over to network endpoint groups. And let's create a new one. Let's give it a name. For the type, it's going to be private service connect. And for the target, it's going to be published service. And the target service is going to be the service attachment for the new region. Finally, the network is going to be the APG VPC. And the subnet is the new subnet that we created earlier. So I think we're all good. So let's go ahead and create it. And this will take around a minute or so. So I'm going to come back once it's done. Great. So we have the new network endpoint group. Next, I'm going to modify the global load balancer to make use of this new network endpoint group. 
So let's go over to load balancers. And I'm going to modify this load balancer, which was created earlier by the provisioning wizard. We'll click on edit, go to backend configuration, edit the existing backend service. We're going to add a new backend and select the network endpoint group. Click on done, update and update. And the load balancer is going to take a few minutes to get updated. Once it's done, I'll come back here. All right. It looks like the load balancer has been updated and we can see that the new network endpoint group is part of the backend service. Next, we're going to do a test to make sure that the load balancer is sending traffic to the new region as we expected. But before we do that, it's good to understand what is the load balancing logic. The way that the global load balancer works is that it will choose the region that is closest to the client making the HTTP request. And if that region is not available or is at capacity, it will choose the next closest region. So here's what I'm going to do. On the client side, I'm going to be using a VPN, and this will allow me to select which region I am making the calls from. And on the server side, I will modify the IPG Hello World proxy. I'm going to make it print the region of the runtime instance that is serving the response. In this way, I'm going to be able to know each time which runtime instance served the response. Okay, so let's go over to the IPG console. We'll go to proxies and let's edit the hello world proxy. So there's already a policy for sending a response. You can see that it's sending hello world. So we're going to modify this to say where the response is coming from. Cool. So let's save the changes. Yes, I want to save as a new revision. And let's go ahead and deploy it. All right, so this is gonna take a minute or so, so I'll wait here and come back once it's done. The new revision has been deployed. Let's go ahead and test it. So first I'm going to select the region from my VPN. So let's select Los Angeles. This is going to be on the West Coast. Let's go on a new tab and call the API. And you can see that the response says, hello world from US West one. Now, if I keep repeating this call, it's always gonna keep coming from US West one, no matter how many times I retry this. Now, if we switch to a different region, so let's say New York on the East Coast and refresh the page, we see now that the call is getting a response from US East one. This is great. We were able to verify that the connectivity is working end to end through the global load balancer using private service connect to each of the IPG runtimes in different regions. Well, folks, this is it for the video. If you have additional questions, don't hesitate to reach to me or other Googlers in the IPG community. I have put a link in the description. If you found the content useful, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.